When the U.S. Army officially confirmed that the Abrams M1E3 is not another incremental upgrade but a fifth-generation main battle tank, it marked the end of one era and the deliberate beginning of another. This isn't just a naming exercise or a procurement update. It's a strategic redefinition of what armored warfare means in the 21st century. For decades, the Abrams has symbolized American land power, but that power was built on Cold War assumptions. The M1E3 represents something different, a tank engineered not for the wars America fought, but for the wars it believes are coming. The decision to terminate the M1A2 SEPV-4 program and shift entirely to the M1E3 marks a rare acknowledgement by the Army that incremental modernization is no longer enough. The SEPV-4 upgrade would have added weight, complexity, and cost, exactly the traits that have become liabilities on modern battlefields where speed, networking, and electronic survivability matter as much as armor thickness. By contrast, the M1E3 reflects a philosophical shift, less mass, more intelligence. The army is effectively admitting that even the best Cold War designs have reached their evolutionary limit. This pivot didn't happen overnight. It traces back to years of analysis and experimentation, including the Army Science Board's 2019 study that recommended a seven-year, $2.9 billion program to develop a fifth-generation combat vehicle. Around the same time, General Dynamics Land Systems introduced the Abrams X Technology Demonstrator, a glimpse into what an Abrams freed from its own legacy could look like. The Abrams X wasn't an official program, but it became a testing ground for ideas that would directly shape the M1E3's DNA, hybrid electric propulsion, a reduced crew, an unmanned turret, networked sensors, artificial intelligence. These weren't gimmicks, they were signposts. The Abrams X stunned audiences when it debuted in Washington in 2022. It was roughly 10 tons lighter than a standard M1A2, featured a sleek compact silhouette, and was powered by a hybrid electric diesel system said to improve fuel efficiency by up to 50%. For a vehicle that traditionally gulps fuel like a jet engine, that kind of improvement changes everything, operational range, logistics, and even tactical endurance. Less refueling means greater flexibility, a crucial advantage in distributed, sensor-saturated battlefields where supply lines are prime targets. The new M1E3 takes this logic even further. Although the Army has not released final specifications, the parallels are too clear to ignore. A hybrid electric powertrain would not only reduce the tank's fuel burden but also allow limited silent operation, a capability that has enormous tactical implications for stealth, ambush, and reconnaissance. In an age of thermal sensors and drone swarms, the ability to move or idle quietly could mean the difference between survival and detection. Weight reduction is another pillar of the transformation. The current Abrams weighs over 70 tons, making it difficult to deploy and costly to maintain. The Army's new procurement documents explicitly call for reversing decades of weight growth. That's not just a logistical choice, it's a doctrinal one. Modern wars are showing that agility and distributed survivability often trump sheer armor mass. Russia's experience in Ukraine, for instance, has shown that heavy armor without situational awareness is simply a bigger target. The M1E3 seeks to strike a balance, enough protection to survive hits, but light enough to fight as part of a fast, networked formation rather than a lumbering steel phalanx. The concept of an unmanned turret, another hallmark of the Abrams X, reflects this evolution. By relocating the crew into the hull, survivability increases dramatically. Automation and auto-loading allow the crew to shrink from 4 to 3, reducing manpower and internal volume while improving protection. The Army has studied auto-loaders for decades but resisted adopting them largely due to reliability and training concerns. Now, as digital fire control systems and AI-assisted targeting mature, those barriers are disappearing. The M1E3 might finally bring the American tank into the era of true crew machine integration. What about firepower? Reports suggest that Abrams X was designed with an adaptable gun architecture compatible with future kinetic and guided munitions, including advanced anti-tank missiles and programmable rounds. The M1E3 will likely inherit this modularity, giving it the flexibility to evolve alongside future threats. It's not just about firing faster or farther, it's about intelligent fire control, using AI-driven systems to prioritize multiple targets, coordinate with drones, and operate seamlessly as part of a larger network. That networking aspect is perhaps the most revolutionary part of the M1E3 vision. Unlike its predecessors, the new Abrams is being built not as an isolated tank, but as a digital combat node within the Army's emerging ecosystem of manned and unmanned systems. Think of it less as a tank and more as a command and control platform wrapped in armor. It will communicate directly with UAVs, ground robots, and infantry units, sharing sensor data in real time. 
This is how the army envisions dominating complex battlefields through integration, not isolation. Artificial intelligence will play a central role in this transformation. The Abrams X demonstrator showcased an onboard AI that could detect, classify, and prioritize threats long before human crews could visually identify them. It also demonstrated predictive maintenance and adaptive battlefield awareness, tools that keep the vehicle operational longer under high stress conditions. In the M1E3, these capabilities could mature into full fledged decision support systems, allowing the tank to function as part of a human machine team rather than a manually driven behemoth. Strategically, the M1E3 also fits within the Army's broader transformation initiative, which emphasizes rapid prototyping, digital design, and modular development. Instead of designing a static platform that takes decades to evolve, the Army wants a flexible baseline that can integrate new sensors, weapons, and software on the fly. The M1E3 will not be a one-off model. It will be a living system constantly updated as technology advances. In many ways, this approach mirrors how the F-35 fighter jet evolved a single adaptable framework designed to absorb innovation rather than resist it. So why now? Because the battlefield itself has changed. In Ukraine, cheap drones and smart munitions have proven that even the most advanced tanks are vulnerable without networked protection. In the Pacific, mobility and logistical endurance matter more than static defense. The US Army is reading the same signals as everyone else. The age of the super heavy tank is ending. Future wars will be fought by lighter, faster, more connected machines, and the M1E3 is the Army's bet on that future. Of course, questions remain. How soon can the Army field this fifth-generation tank? Can hybrid electric systems handle the brutality of armored warfare? Will reducing the crew compromise redundancy under fire? These are not trivial concerns. But for the first time in decades, the Abrams is being reinvented from the ground up. Not patched, not upgraded, but reimagined. The Abrams M1E3 will not just replace the M1A2, it will redefine what main battle tank means, a platform that merges stealth and endurance, automation and decision making, armor and data. In the long arc of armored warfare, this may prove to be the same kind of leap that separated the Panther from the Tiger or the T14 from the T72, a generational break, not an iteration. The US Army's decision signals a simple truth, the future of tanks is not heavier, it's smarter. And as the M1E3 begins its path toward operational reality, one thing becomes clear. The next great contest of armored innovation has already begun.